Hello, Keith here with another statistical video, this time mini tab analysis of variance and some things to look out when interpreting the results of more complicated studies. In this case, I'm using real data, and as the study is a little bit more complicated than the ones I usually talk about, I need to give a little bit of the background. So, this particular study was looking at mangrove seedling survival and growth. And one thing many people may not realize is that mangrove seeds are different to those of most other plants. They start to grow while they're still attached to the plant. So you get this long root-like structure starting to grow out before the seedling falls and then starts to grow in the mud, as you can see down here, bottom left. Some are more like ordinary seeds over here, bottom right particular plant I'll be looking at, or a particular plant we have data for, is this one here, Cereops australis, which has quite a long root growing before it falls off the plant, or it falls off the tree. Okay, so what did we actually do? Well, one thing that seems obvious to many people is that the long root structure here might be helpful to the plant in allowing to get established in that fall straight off the tree and self plants itself essentially and that gives it a head start and some advantages in this rather unstable and unfavorable environment but others have suggested that this really isn't the case so one of the things we were looking at in this particular experiment was well does that really happen so we were going to compare seedlings which were just um, dropped seedlings which were deliberately planted and also seedlings that were protected in cages. Now you can see a cage over here top bright and someone planting propagules down here bottom right. What's the cage for? What's it about? We well, can see top left large holes, bottom left crabs. Crabs in these environments often eat the seeds and seedlings. And so one thing we were doing, looking at, was what happens if we protect the seedlings with cages? Now, mangrove forest environments can be rather complicated with different species growing in different places. So we've got the back area, the high shore area, uh, the mid shore re regions, and the lower shore regions and the tide comes in up along creeks and as you would imagine floods the bottom areas very frequently so they're muddy and wet and as you go further up it gets wetter it gets drier and flooded less frequently okay with that interrupt with that interruption to explain what's going on let's flick over to a mini tab okay so here are the data from that study the species is this one, Cereops australis. The treatments are cage dropped or planted, done in the three regions I illustrated in the aerial photograph there, mid, high and low. And a factor I didn't mention, the whole thing done at two different locations within the forest. So that's two different study sites. Our three replicates and lastly, the thing that we're interested in, the survival of those plants expressed as a percentage of the ones that were initially in that plot to start with. So treatment, region, site, that gives me three factors. So to test hypotheses about averages, I need to go over to analysis of variance. And I've got two possibilities here, balanced, which will certainly work in this case because I have three replicates of balanced design for all combinations or the general linear model, which I'm going to use because it has some more options. So, survival is the response I'm interested in, and I put the model down here, and I'm using the bars between the three factors to tell Minitab to expand out the full model, so that it'll have the main effects, treatment region and site, the two-way interactions, treatment region, treatment site and region site, and the full third-way interaction between all of those three factors. Now if you've got 
a nested design or some more complicated design, go down to the help and look at Minitab's help for how to specify other types of experiments and other types of studies. I don't have covariates. There are no options here I need to fiddle with. Um, if I look at these, it's just mainly which type of sum of squares and type 3 is appropriate here. Um, I don't want to do any comparisons. The graphs here brings up residual plots for looking at assumptions. So I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'm going to assume everything is okay. What results do I want? I just want the analysis of variance table this time. I don't want to store any results. Factor plots. And so down here, I want to look at an interaction plot for the two things I'm most interested in, the actual experiment treatments and the different parts of the forest. So I put in treatment and region. Now Minitab's interaction plots are actually very helpful in looking at more complicated effects. So let's run that. Um, and that's putting the interaction plot one way around. I actually want a slightly different version. So let me run it again. And switch these two around. Let's go to region, treatment. Okay, so let's look at the results first. Now, looking down here at the p-values, in fact, every main effect in interaction is significant except region by site. Certainly treatment by region, the thing I was most interested in, is significant. So let's go over and look at that graph. There it is. And so what we're looking at here, the high shore region, caged has higher survival than the other two treatments which had nil survival. Uh, in the other two habitats, it's, or the other two regions, it's fairly similar. High survival in at caged and better than in the higher shore region. Virtually no survival when they're just dropped on the ground and intermediate when they're planted with some difference between the lower and higher areas. Now one problem with the interaction plot which makes it a bit less useful than it might be is it doesn't have error bars. So over here one I've done earlier, I've put on the error bars and they show you that there's a fair bit of variability in some of these um, results. And so some things might not be as strongly significant as they might otherwise be. Now I'll show you later how to draw this. But what I want to do is go back here to the results for a minute. Now remember I said everything except region by site was significant. That means that treatment by region by site is also significant. That's the three-way interaction. So we should really have a look at what's going on there. So let's start. Graph. Interval plot. I want to put groups on. I'm going to look at survival. And now still want to look at treatment and region. I don't want to change anything down here, but multiple graphs. In separate panels on the same graph, I'd like to look at sites, please. So this is a way of breaking out that third factor. Now I can actually do it in separate graphs, so you may prefer to do it that way. Go. Okay, so this is not looking too much like what I wanted to start with. First of all, and there's no particular order in which we need to change these things. The standard error is more conventional on these sorts of graphs, so let's have a standard error. Thank you. Um, I don't really think this text up here is very useful, it takes some space. And I'm not happy with this side-by-side -side arrangement. 
So arrangement here, custom, two rows, thank you, one panel. Now we're starting to get a bit more like what I want. Um, but this is not very interpretable. So let me click on the line here. And what I'm doing here is Control T to bring up the attributes because that's the easiest way to do it. Groups. So what I want to do is to assign attributes by region. Whoops, region. And tick here to do the same thing for all the data displays. Now it's getting a bit closer. Not perfect by any means. Now, symbols. The default symbols are rubbish. So let's have, say, full circles in there. And a tiny bit bigger. Starting to get there. Let's go to the line. It's too skinny. So let's make that a bit bigger. Um, error bars here also need to be a little bit fatter. And it's starting to get there. Problem is the colors for the lines are not matching up yet. So let's see if we can fix that. Red. And lastly, the line here. Can I get it? Yeah. Whoops, no. Green down there. Now it's looking pretty good. Um, one of the things I like about Minitab is the three click. So I click and I get all the symbols. Click again and I get the series. Click again and I get the individual symbol. So I can change each individual one. Now the last thing I need to fix up here is just what's going on down here with the axis. So edit the scale. I'm going to change these things. You need to fiddle with this one. I'm going to try minus 0.85 to start with. And this one down here a smaller number gives you bigger or wider error bars. A bigger number gives you smaller error bars. And then attributes. Something wrong. Show. I don't want the axis label for the region. Over there. And now that's looking pretty good. So we've got a graph for site 1, a graph for site 2. Um, plotted out with a line for each of the regions. And now let's start having a look at what's going on down here. Eh. All of a sudden we start to see some profound differences that we didn't pick up if we just looked at those two factors that we're really interested in. So start looking here at the high shore. Site 2 all dead. Site 1 good survivorship in the cage treatment. Let's have a look at the Mitchell. Site 2, good survival caged, dead, dropped and planted. But Site 1, good survival, planted and caged, about equivalent, and poor survival. Here it dropped. The story for the mid, the low shore region is there's less difference. So pretty much the same site one and two, slightly lower at site two there than at site one, but the same general idea. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is first of all, just how you would go about setting up the analysis of variance. You'll need to look at the help for examples of more complicated models, for instance, um, randomized block designs or nested designs or repeated measures designs. Second, the interaction plot that you can get in ANOVA is very helpful for looking at what's going on when you've got more than one 
uh, treatment or one more than one effect going on and something complicated is going on. But it lacks the error bars. But using interval plot you can do error bars on your interaction plot and also break out a third factor like this and it can often be very important to do that because there are quite significant and biologically important differences between these two sites in terms of what's happening. So hopefully that's helpful.